when you think about, well, look, let me be real about it, because I don't, I don't like beating around the bush too much. If we were to be honest, we all have times that we were looking for the presence of God in our lives. We are looking for God because we feel so badly, or we feel so lonely, or we feel so lost, and things are going wrong in our lives and in our relationships, and we are waiting for some positive feeling from God, some, 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 some presence of something. Uh, and, and even for the people uh, that don't believe in Jesus, they still are they're looking for something, something more than a person, something more than them. But the problem is when Jesus shows up, people either run out the room or they choose not to ride with him. People come in looking for something from God and then Jesus shows up and then you leave. He didn't do it by mistake. Jesus shows up and like in the text message, many times we're in church and we cheer and we praise and we worship. The problem is, like in the text, we also don't really know who Jesus is. Let me, let me, let me, let me be honest because I know we don't want to talk about it, so I got I to gotta do it myself. The people in the text thought they knew who Jesus was, but they were wrong. Now understand something. They done laid out their clothes. They done pulled palm trees off. They're waving. They are praising. They actually don't know who he is. And because of that, they were looking for Jesus to do things that Jesus wasn't going to do. They wanted a tangible, physical, living commander. They got a man who would die for their forgiveness of sins and grant them salvation. Look, I'll hit this and move, and then I'll, I'll, I'll keep on with the sermon. In the last, I don't know, decade, I've seen people who call themselves Christians or followers of Christ make up in their head who they think Jesus is. Uh, they make up what they think God is supposed to look like, and that's okay. Uh, they don't like this part, so they don't follow that part. Uh, uh, they, they like this part, so they keep that part. Uh, they would like God to look like this, so that's what they believe. And they think that solely their faith is personal, and God is who you want God to be. All right, if that's your thing, that's cool, but don't start expecting the other God, the real one, and Jesus to start answering your prayers to this other God. Just because you call it Jesus doesn't mean that's what it is. You've made something else. Uh, so people walk in church and they worship and they praise and they sing and they pray to a God that many of them actually don't know. But rather one that they made up in his image. Then walk around and get mad when your prayers aren't answered. Listen, I, um, I had an IRS issue some years ago. Not, not my fault, but I had an IRS issue some years ago. They crossed my social security with, number with somebody else's. The person they crossed it with owed them a lot of money. Randomly one day, I started getting $1,000 checks in the mail, right? Now, I know most people go, so you cashed them, right? And I go, no, that's the IRS. They come back and take everything you got. They'll take my teeth if they think it's worth it, <laughs> right? So IRS keeps sending me thousands of dollars worth of checks, and I keep sending them back, and I keep getting more checks, and I keep sending them back, and I keep getting more checks. And I call them and they say, no, this, this is your money. I said, but why? I, 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 haven't even, I know I haven't paid you that much money. So where's this coming from? Come to find out, because they crossed my social, somebody else owed them. So the person would pay them what they owed. But when it pulled up in the computer, I didn't owe anything. So I kept getting the money back that the other person paid. So he's paying, gets into the system, they think it's me, comes around to me. The reality is the connection was never made. Because as far as the system looked, we were the same person. The problem was we weren't. It's the same thing with God. People are throwing prayers up to a God that doesn't exist, but you call it the same thing and then want to know how come prayers aren't answered on the other end. Then you start blaming God for the fact that your prayers aren't answered. That's not the person you were talking to. But you don't know that because you've bought into all the stories. and all. I did this in Sunday school. I told the teenagers in Sunday school, listen, I think we all suffer a little bit from not knowing as much as we could know about our faith, I think adult and everybody else, there's, there's more you can learn. But if you're coming in here every day and you crying and you praying and hoping that a spirit shows up and you don't even have any decent idea of where the stuff comes from, you got to do better service just to yourself. I'm not saying anything's wrong with you. Like I said, I think we all kind of take sometimes what we hear for granted and go, yeah, well, I heard this preacher say this. And they go, well, what's the foundation of it? Uh, uh, the preacher said it. Or you hear a song. I know me and Brother Berryman have uh, issues with this kind of stuff. You hear bad theology in a song. A song tells you something about God, and you go, no, nah, no, nah, that, that, that's not right. And then people singing it, hands up, crying. 
and we're sitting there going, no, 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 that's, 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 that's not right. That's, that's not right. Jesus shows up with intention to be seen, but it has, it's supposed to be him. Jesus can't control how you decide to interpret what you see. Jesus showed up like the Savior was supposed to show up. He fit the prophecy the way the prophecy was supposed to be understood. People decided to interpret it another way. We have a job to do. When he does show up, and when we know that he showed up for us, is to make sure that we are trying to get a good idea and a clear idea of who this Jesus really is. All right? So I didn't want to stay there that long. But that, that is what it is. Um, so let me keep moving. Let me keep moving. When Jesus shows up, he shows up without permission. And when Jesus shows up, he shows up with intention. He wants us to see that it's him, that it's the son of God, and that he is in control. But we have to do work on our own. All right, so point one was what? He shows up. And point two is what? He shows up. Point three, when Jesus shows up, there's tension. There's tension. Explanation is necessary. Uh, Just follow me really quick. The people in the text message were making a big deal about Jesus being there, uh, such a big deal, that some of the other Jews who felt like it was their job to make sure that people were being good Jews, uh, they told Jesus to tell those people to keep it down and stop this nonsense. They obviously didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah and furthermore didn't like Jesus personally. Uh, But Jesus says, if the people don't praise me, if the people don't shout, if the people don't cry out, then the rocks will cry out. Now, I just got to double back very quickly because this is an important phrase here. I need you to understand something. The people are shouting for a Jesus that's not real in their head. They're shouting for a Savior that doesn't exist. But if they stop shouting and the rocks cry out, the funny thing is the rocks would know who Jesus is. Because rocks not going to cry out for somebody that's not God. That's just a little quick thing I always thought about. It might have been better if the rocks were crying out. Nobody can deny that. Anytime Jesus shows up anywhere, there's always going to be tension. Anytime Jesus shows up, there's going to be a force trying to work against him. If something good's going on, there's something bad waiting for you. If you're having a great time, there's something negative sitting right outside. If you're having a special moment, there is someone waiting to ruin it. And if Jesus is showing up, if God is about to work in your life, you can believe that someone is out there trying to stop it. If you shout too much in church, somebody is ready to go Pharisee on you and ask you to keep it down. In any and every part of your life. If God is working, then the enemy is waiting. When Jesus shows up, there will be, there will be tension. If the devil can confront Jesus directly and try to tempt him, then you can believe that if he's hanging out with you, that you're going to catch something from that. Let me warn you, once you start getting your life together or once you decide to continue to grow in Christ, tension shows up very, very quickly. Number one complaint for new believers is they became a believer and they ran into more drama than they had the first time. That's how it works. As long as you were comfortable living the way you weren't supposed to, nobody was trying to stop you. But once you bring Jesus in, it seems like every right turn takes you the wrong way. But just keep pushing. Nobody bothers you when you're comfortable in your struggle. I've I've never met somebody who was bothered because they were comfortable in their struggle. When your kids are bad and when your parents are messed up, when your life is wrong, nobody's pulling really hard the other way. The minute Jesus shows up and starts working miracles in your life, people will tell you, remember how bad those kids were? And people will be waiting for your parents to mess up again. And no one will let you forget what you did back then. But if you don't, if you don't live for Jesus, if you don't stand up for Jesus, if you don't acknowledge Jesus, Jesus still is going to get some praise from somebody because he's so good. That something else is going to have to give if you don't. And I've heard my entire life, I don't want no rocks crying out for me. So number one is he shows up without permission. Number two, he shows up with intention. Number three, when he shows up, there's tension. I know it's a tongue twister. And number four, when he shows up, he shows up on a mission. I know, I know, an explanation is necessary, and I'm about to be out your way uh, because his robe is hot. He shows up on a mission. There is something that people don't realize. Um, In the Bible, in Palm Sunday story, they were cheering for Jesus to come and become the leader, to be this leader, to start his mission of saving them. 
But Jesus was finishing the mission on his way into Jerusalem. Uh, uh, they thought they were cheering him on at the start, whereas they were actually cheering him on at the finish line. Uh, uh, when they finally saw him and understood who he was, they thought he was there to begin the fight. But instead, they saw him in that way because he was finishing the fight. Y'all didn't get that. All right, listen. Uh, I have two goddaughters, very little girls, and one day uh, my wife and I were uh, at uh, the family, at the family's house, and the one goddaughter, I can't remember how old she was, she was really small, she still was sitting in her little booster seat at the kitchen table, uh, and she begins to choke, right? And she, I mean, she, you kind of see it, she automatically kind of did that. The mother got up, ran over to her, I mean, quick, fast, in a hurry, uh, got her face, said, mommy's here, went behind her, gave her Heimlich, spit the thing out. The girl kind of cried for a little bit, patted her back, and make sure she was fine. The mother got up and got over to the daughter, and uh, uh, by the time the daughter knew something was wrong, mama was already there. She, by the time she realized something's off, mama was already right there. Uh, 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 and she gave her the Heimlich, which was a little uncomfortable, uh, but before she even knew she was in trouble, the mother was already on the way without permission. And her mother showed up, with, uh, uh, and showed up with her and let her know that she was there with intention. And daughter had to be uncomfortable uh, in, in a tense moment by being given the Heimlich. Uh, she was caught between uh, breathing and choking. Uh, so there was some tension there. And by the time the girl saw her mother, by the time the girl finally could actually even think about what to tell her mother, her mother was already finishing her mission. Listen, the mother knew what to do and how to do it. Mom didn't show up and start working when the daughter realized there was a problem. Mama's been working the whole time. By the time the baby saw her, she was already finishing up the job. I just came by to tell you before I take my seat that before you ever called on Jesus, he was already on the mission. He was already working before you ever thought you needed him. He was coming to get you before you ever thought you needed a ride. He was coming to help you before you ever thought you needed help. He was coming to save you before you ever thought you needed saving. And he didn't show up because you called on him. It was by the time he got in front of you, he had already been on the way. Your praise doesn't make Jesus show up. God's love made Jesus show up. Your cries don't make Jesus show up for your problem. He was already showing up for your problem. By the time you start feeling Jesus and seeing Jesus, he's already been working in the background. Just like that girl's mother, he shows up without permission. And he shows up to let you know his intention. And when he shows up, the fight between good and evil, right and wrong, spirit in the flesh, will always make sure that there's some tension. But he's showing up because he's on a mission. If you're going to praise, don't praise because you think he doesn't know about your problems. Praise him because you know that he's already on a mission to get you through your problems. The question is, will you ride with him? Don't shout because you think it's going to get his attention. Shout because he's already given you his attention. You had it back when he was preparing to go on the cross, but will you ride with him? I know that you've been waiting in the cold. I know that you feel like you're going to be late for your next level in life. Like the plane to take you higher is taking too long. But you should know that by the time you see Jesus, by the time you feel Jesus, he's already been working on your behalf, already throwing around favor, already throwing around forgiveness, already bled and died, already sending grace and mercy, already giving you the power to keep on keeping on. He's already on the mission. So when Jesus shows up, know that he's already been moving chess pieces around. He's just allowing you to watch when he gets checkmate. He shows up without permission. He shows up with intention. He shows up. There's going to be some tension because when he shows up, he's on a mission. The question is, but will you ride with him? Will you let rocks cry out for you? Will you sit down on Jesus? Will you not learn who he really is? He's been busting his tail. Generation after generation after generation, just to keep our heads above water. 
We're trying to tell Jesus, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to make it. How do you think you've been making it this far? I don't know if I can handle any more. How do you think you've been handling it? I don't know if I can make it until tomorrow. How do you think you've been making it all these other days? Just because you feel like giving up now doesn't mean Jesus isn't there. He's already on the mission. So I want to make sure before I take my seat, I'm going to put my iPad in the chair so you know I'm done. I just want to make sure that if you're going to praise God, do me a favor. Praise him because he's already been so good. If you're going to wave your hand, wave it because he's already been there for you. If you're going to lay your clothes down, lay them down because he's already God all by himself. When Jesus shows up, you treat him right. You give him the royal treatment. You invite him in. You wave your hands knowing that he's king of kings and lord of lords. And know that he's already doing what he's supposed to do. And you cheer him on no matter what stage he may be in the race. You cheer him on when you don't feel him. You cheer him on when you do feel him. You cheer him on when you don't see him. You cheer him on when you do see him. You cheer him on when you don't hear him, and you cheer him on when you do, because he's behind the scenes working. Remember that when Jesus shows up, things start to happen. And we don't always get to see everything, but it's there. When that hits you, that was Jesus. And you knew it was Jesus. You knew it was Jesus last time, but you tried to trick yourself into thinking it was something else. And it's supposed to be tight when you get on the other side because now somebody's trying to pull you back into the wrong realm. There is tension. But know that for all of that, Jesus is still right there working every step of the way because he's on a mission. God bless you.